Are you one who's been diagnosed with diabetes or even prediabetes? If so, like many Americans, you may have been told by your doctor that you need to start taking diabetes medications. What if I told you that you can dramatically reduce your need for these medications just by making a few changes in your diet? I'm Dr. Lindsay Marie. I'm a board certified family medicine physician. And today we are going to be talking all about this topic. So stay tuned. So first of all, when it comes to diabetes, there are a few basic facts that you need to be aware of in order to understand how your body works and therefore how to treat it when things go wrong. Diabetes, mainly type two diabetes, is caused by something known as insulin resistance. So what is insulin? Insulin is a hormone produced in the pancreas that helps regulate the amount of glucose in your blood. It helps blood sugar enter your body's cells so that it can be used for energy. What causes insulin resistance? Insulin resistance occurs when your body is bombarded with too much glucose and your pancreas can't keep up with producing enough insulin to get all of that glucose into your cells. Therefore, it stays in the bloodstream and you develop high blood glucose levels. Over time, this leads to prediabetes and eventually diabetes. So what foods, if eaten too much of, can lead to insulin resistance? Well, all foods can produce an increase in glucose levels, but certain foods cause a higher increase than others, mainly carbohydrates and sugars. Carbohydrates are broken down into sugars and sugars are broken down into glucose as one source of our body's energy. Now, this is something that you may not have heard of before, but all foods are ranked based on their glycemic index. The glycemic index or GI is a value used to measure how much specific foods increase blood sugar levels. Foods are ranked on a scale of zero to 100. The lower the glycemic index of a specific food, the less it may affect your blood sugar levels. And within this scale, foods are typically broken down into three categories. Low glycemic index, which is ranked from zero to 55. Medium glycemic index, which is 56 to 69. And high glycemic index, which is 70 and higher. So nowadays there are tons of resources on the internet talking about this topic, including glycemic index charts. It shows which foods have low, medium, or high glycemic index based on their number value. So now I just wanted to go over a few of those charts with you all, and the first one is here. As you can see at the top, it has the scale of zero to 100, and underneath it, it shows the three categories of glycemic index, low, medium, and high. Under low, some examples include apples with a glycemic index of 39, cashew nuts with a glycemic index of 21, and brown rice with a glycemic index of 55, which is right on the upper limit of the low category. For foods with medium glycemic index, it lists raisins, 64, pineapple, 66, and an example of wheat thins, 67. For foods in the high glycemic index category, this is gonna be more of your processed foods, including corn chips, 72. They also mention Gatorade, 78. Pretzels is pretty high, it's 83. And definitely white rice is gonna be on the higher end at 89. So if you think about it, there are certain cultures and populations that the main staple of their diet is white rice. And within these cultures, we are seeing a higher amount of diabetes within the population. In the case of diabetes or even prediabetes, I'm not here to tell you to completely stop eating your main staple foods within your diet, but I am here to hopefully educate you on certain aspects of food and the science behind food and how it can lead to diabetes. That way, with increased knowledge, you can make better food choices for yourself and therefore reduce your risk for these diseases. So now let's just go over a few more charts. This one here is a little bit more in depth. It's showing a lot more food choices, as you can see, and it even breaks it down into categories. So it has grains, vegetables, fruits, dairy, and proteins. So on the grains, you wanna look for those lower glycemic index foods, less than 55, as foods that are better to eat if you have prediabetes or diabetes. It will help keep your blood glucose sugars down and prevent blood glucose spikes after you eat. When it comes to grains or carbohydrates, as a general rule, you wanna remember that more brown or wheat pastas and breads are a little bit lower on the glycemic index, whereas white breads and bagels and white cakes and anything white is gonna be higher, much higher on the glycemic index. As you can see, a white bagel is even over 100, which is the maximum of the glycemic index scale. 
I did a lot of research on the different glycemic index of fruits and as a general rule when it comes to fruit, watermelon showed the highest across all the charts. Lower glycemic index fruits were things like apples, grapefruits, and peaches. They also mentioned bananas. Now on this chart, it is showing it is in the low category. However, they did say if the banana was more ripened, it can be a higher glycemic index. Here is the list for dairy. Generally low fat yogurt or plain yogurt is the lowest on the scale. And a higher item on the scale is definitely gonna be ice cream because it does contain a lot more sugar, which breaks down into glucose. And lastly, when it comes to vegetables, you can't go wrong because as you can see, all of these vegetables listed here are in the low glycemic index category. Vegetables are healthy and safe to eat. If you do have diabetes, they have low carbohydrate count and low sugar count. Okay, so those were just a few examples of some charts with certain foods and where they land on the glycemic index scale in general. You can try to remember some of those. If you can't, like I said, you could always print out one of your favorite charts and post it on your refrigerator. That way you don't have to stress out about which foods are lower and which foods are higher and the ones that you should avoid if you do have diabetes or prediabetes. If you are finding this information interesting or helpful so far, be sure to hit the like button. All right, so now moving on, there are just four other tips that I wanted to share with you guys to help lower your blood glucose and control your sugars better without medications, and I'll go over those now. In addition to avoiding more higher glycemic index foods and switching your diet and food choices to more lower glycemic index foods, my additional tip number one is to eat more fiber. Eating more fiber in your diet helps aid in digestion. It can also help lower cholesterol and it helps lower blood glucose spikes by slowing down the breakdowns of carbohydrates. It takes your body longer to digest high fiber foods and therefore takes a longer time to break down into sugars, which would prevent those high glucose spikes. The second tip I have for you to help manage your blood glucose levels if you have prediabetes or diabetes is to discuss something known as food pairing. Food pairing is basically in reference to which foods you are eating together and which categories those foods are in. For instance, if it's carbohydrates, fats, or proteins. A general rule to remember is that if you eat carbohydrates alone, you can have higher instances of blood glucose spikes, whereas if you are able to eat carbohydrates along with proteins, you actually have less of a chance of glucose spikes. This chart here just gives some examples of some snacks that include food pairing with both protein and carbohydrates. And the first one shown is a handful of nuts that's providing your protein source and you can pair it with a fruit such as an apple, which is your carbohydrate source. Now, if you were just eating an apple alone, you would have a higher glucose spike than if you were to eat it with the protein, including the nuts. You can see some other snack items listed here. If you remember, pretzels was really high on the glycemic index chart. If you like to eat pretzels and you still want to eat them, that's okay. Just pair it with something like a beef jerky to provide a protein and that can also help lower the blood glucose spike that you get. There are also times when food pairing is really important and that is during breakfast. And I also wanted to mention this because there is a whole nother science behind breakfast and how your body responds to the first foods that you eat in the morning to break your fast. When your body goes through the night without any carbohydrates, food sources, or sugars at all, it can be more prone to glucose spikes if you're introducing high glycemic index food first thing in the morning. So to counteract those high glucose spikes in the morning, if your body is prone to insulin resistance, such as having diabetes or prediabetes, you definitely want to choose foods that include much higher protein levels to counteract the high glycemic index foods of the carbohydrates. A lot of Americans might just eat cereal and milk or pancakes and syrup, and those are very high glycemic index foods. Your body can manage the increase in glucose in your bloodstream with those foods if you pair them with sausage, let's say, or definitely eggs are great sources of proteins in the morning to eat for breakfast. Again, that's just a basic introduction on food pairing with protein and carbohydrates, but I hope you get the idea that you can help lower your glucose spikes by pairing carbohydrates with proteins. The third tip I have for you to help manage your blood glucose levels is by decreasing your portion size. Now again, we just talked all about certain foods, including carbohydrates and proteins, but not overdoing it in these foods is also the key to managing your blood sugars. 
Keeping lower portions when you eat also helps maintain your amount of calories for the day and can prevent weight gain. As you can imagine, the more amount of food you put into your body, the harder it has to work to break down that food and the higher the chance you have for higher blood glucose levels. So keep that in mind the next time you're eating a meal or even a snack. And finally, number four, the last tip I have for you to help manage your blood glucose levels is getting in some movement after you eat. Studies have shown that people who are mostly sedentary have higher chances to get insulin resistance. And we now know that insulin resistance leads to prediabetes and eventually diabetes. Not only does exercise in general help keep you healthy and preventing diseases like diabetes, Getting in some movement after you eat also helps to reduce blood glucose spikes and manage your blood sugars well. Exercise diverts blood flow away from the intestines, reducing glucose absorption, and any glucose that doesn't enter the cells after eating can then be taken up by the muscles during your exercise. It doesn't take a lot of exercise to produce a drop in post-meal blood glucose levels. One study showed that just 15 minutes of walking after meals can significantly improve your glycemic control over a 24 hour period. Some ways that you can get in some extra movement after a meal includes avoid sitting for long periods of time after eating, which means you can avoid reading or watching TV right after you eat. Other ways include going on a quick walk with your dog, doing some chores, or even going shopping, which is more fun. So just a quick recap of everything we have discussed today to help you manage your blood glucose levels if you are prone to insulin resistance, prediabetes, or have diabetes, and those include one, choosing lower glycemic index foods more on a daily basis or limiting those foods that have a higher glycemic index. Two, eating more fiber in your diet. Three, making smart food pairing choices, including eating more proteins when you have carbohydrates. Four, reducing portion sizes. And five, getting in some movement after you eat. Not only have all of these things been shown to help manage blood glucose levels and lower insulin resistance, they have also been shown to help lower cholesterol, lower blood pressure, and help you lose weight. So I hope that helps in giving you slightly more insight into the foods that you're eating and how it affects your blood glucose levels. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask me in the comments section. I would be happy to answer those for you. If you know others who may benefit from this information, be sure to share it and don't forget to subscribe as I am making new videos like these in the future. And until next time, bye.